Hello again, friends. Today I'm going to walk you through how to draw this beautiful floral wreath made up of wild roses, peony, little berries, and greenery. My name is Carla, and I'm an artist and educator here to make art more approachable and enjoyable for all, and of course, share my love of florals with you. If you're new to my channel, I'd love if you'd subscribe to stay on top of my drawing tutorials. To get started on this floral wreath, you'll need a few basic supplies. Starting with a sketching pencil, a micron or fine line black pen, a kneadable eraser or good quality eraser, and a bowl or some sort of circular object that is about five or six inches in diameter or whatever size you want to create within. To start, Grab your pencil and trace a circle onto your page by tracing around the bowl. Once you have your circle in place, come in and sketch out a large circle with another small circle within it. Basically here, all we're doing is mapping out where the main elements of the piece will be. Next, add a few smaller circles with another circle within them on either side of the large one. Now I'm going to come in and add some leaf shapes, just layering them around where I think they look good. There is no real system to this, I'm just trying to envision where I want the elements of the piece to be and laying them on the page. I'm happy with the overall basic composition I've created here now, so I'm going to grab a fine line Secure of America pen in size 3 and start outlining the details of this piece starting with the center of the peony bloom. For the center, start off with a few of these diamond shapes I'm drawing here. I'm going to add about 6 or so to make up the very center of the flower stamen. Once these diamond shapes are in place, I'm going to come in and start adding the anthers, which kind of look like layers and layers of tiny little worms when you draw them. Don't worry about making these shapes uniform. Just play around a bit with the curves and lines you're adding to the page and keep layering them together until you've filled in all the way around the circle we drew. Once the center of the peony is drawn, we're going to come in and start adding some petals. The first set of petals I'm adding here is going to be curved up toward the center of the flowers. Draw a long shape that converts at either edge like I'm doing here. Once they're drawn, just connect them back to the center of the flower with a curved line to create the petal. See how it looks like a folded petal now? After we've added some shadow lines in the next step, it will really add some dimension to the piece. Now let's come in and start adding in some more petals to fill in the rest of the circle. If you create some sort of wonky, bumpy U-shape that always connects back to the center, you're on the right track. I'm again not worrying too much about what the petals look like here as long as they have a few bumps and dips and always connect back to the center of the bloom, they'll end up looking great, I promise you. You'll notice that some of the petals I'm adding have some little folds in them that I've created by just adding an extra little line along the edge. Again, 
Once the detail lines are added in, you'll really see how they look like folds in the petals. Next, I'm going to start working on the second largest element of this piece, which is these three wild roses. I'll start with the center blooms again, but I'm creating them in a bit more of a different way than the peony by grouping a bunch of teeny circles together to fill in the entire center of each bloom. I'll zoom in a bit on the second two that I'm drawing here so you can have a closer look at the line work. Once the circles from the center are filled in, add some tiny ovals in a ring all the way around the center. These ovals don't need to be perfect, just make sure they go all the way around each center. When the ovals are in place, connect them back to the circles in the center of the flower with with a simple quick line. Now that we have the center of the wild rose done, let's come in and add some petals. The petals we do for the wild roses are really basic. They're just that U curved line again with a dip in the middle that connect to the center of each flower. You can add some folds to these petals, just like we did with the peony petals, by adding a small line along some of the edges of the petals. This will just add a bit of depth to each flower when we finally come in and add the detail lines. The next thing we can outline here is the small peony buds we sketched in. I want you to imagine that the leaves are folded around a sphere, coming together at the top. You only need to add a few lines here to create the guard petals. The rest of the petals are still hidden underneath waiting to open up. I might add another one of these buds in after in the background to create some depth, but for now I'm going to wait until I have the leaves in place to make that decision. Nothing is set in stone here. Have fun with what you're creating and feel free to improvise as you go. This is a big part of why I don't like to add too much detail during the pencil draft step. I feel like it kind of boxes in my creativity too much and sometimes I find a piece evolves a lot from where I thought it was going to be while I draw. So as you can see, I've been outlining the leaf shapes here. They're really simple to draw, with two close together parallel lines surrounded by a jagged curved line on either side that comes together at the tip in a point. The leaves I'm drawing here look more like rose leaves than peony leaves, but to keep things simple I wanted to just create them all the same but in different sizes for interest within the drawing. I'll continue adding these leaves around the piece until I feel like I've filled in enough of the open space.
I took a look at my video analytics recently and noticed something like 70% of people watching and liking my videos weren't subscribed to my channel yet. So if you haven't subscribed, I would absolutely love for you to do so and consider leaving a comment here. I'm on that mission right now to get 1000 subscribers and every one of you so far means so much. Thanks for subscribing. You can see I've come in toward the bottom and added a few leaves and another bud in the background to fill things in a bit more, even though this wasn't part of the initial draft that I created. Like I said, a piece can evolve while you're creating. The last thing I want to add here is a few little rose hip berries just for a bit of contrasting shape here. I'm drawing a little diamond shape again with a line down one side and underneath each of these buds I'm adding one little leaf on either side. Notice how all of the elements we're adding on their own are really simple but when they're in the whole composition they add a lot of interest. Connect the rose hips to a narrow stem that will end at the leaf below it to look like they're behind it. I'm going to come in and add two more leaves to the right side to fill in some open space and make sure I haven't overlooked outlining anything and then I'm going to grab that kneadable eraser and get rid of all of the pencil lines. Now you don't need to use a kneadable eraser, but I like them because they don't leave behind eraser crumbs and they do a really good job of lifting up the pencil without making the black pen lines look dull. Some erasers, you have to kind of rub back and forth and you end up lifting away the pencil line and some of the ink and you're left with dull gray lines. So if you can find a kneadable eraser, use one of those. Now we have the whole piece outlined, so I'm going to start adding in some simple detail lines. You'll notice that I started adding in some really quick, simple lines to the petals of the peony bloom. All you want to do here is concentrate your lines to the base of each petal and where you imagine there might be a bit of shadow created by the layers of the petals. I'm keeping the lines really simple here. No cross hatching or stippling or anything fancy at all. I'm working again from the largest element down in size, so once the peony is filled in, I'll tackle the wild roses.
for the roses, I'm going to do the exact same thing where I concentrate the bulk of the lines to the center of the bloom or the bottom of each petal to create depth. I'll add maybe a few lines toward the top of the petals to make it look like there's a bit of a curve to them, but nothing else. I want you to notice how minimal I keep things during this step. Focus on highlighting the areas you want to have a bit of depth in them and ignore the rest. Now I'm going to move on to the leaves. I'm going to slow things down a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm adding a really simple, slightly curved row of lines extending from the center vein outwards to the edges of the leaf until the entire leaf is filled in. Do not hesitate to move your paper around a bit here. When I started making videos, I tried so hard to keep my page in one still position while I drew and the angle wouldn't change, but the reality is you'll probably need to move things around so that your hand is comfortable while you're drawing. Otherwise, you end up with wonky lines and it takes a lot longer to draw. I'm going to keep things sped up here while I finish up these leaves, but the thing that I want you to hone in on is how simple the line work is here again. No cross hatching no layering of lines, just simple rows of lines on either side of the vein on an angle that sort of matches the bottom angle of the leaf. The last element to finish here is the rose hips and buds, so just add a few quick lines where you think the shadow might fall on each like I'm doing here. I added in a few curved broken lines on the buds. I think it's just enough line work to give them the depth that I'm after.
Once the buds are done, that's it. Here is the final floral wreath made up of simply drawn greenery, peonies, and rose blooms. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so so you don't miss out on my upcoming drawing videos. If you enjoyed watching this or have any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.